In the original sort of uh, comic books, you know, especially from the 60s, it's, uh, the Fantastic Car was basically sort of, sort of a platform, uh, almost, of like a flying platform for them. So uh, we have to bring that up to a contemporary era. In the beginning, talking with Tim, he had specific ideas of what he wanted and wanted it to be relatable to the cartoon, and that's why it has the turbines uh, on the bottom and uh, why it breaks apart. And uh, the difference in this is that it breaks apart in three pieces instead of four. A lot of times I draw from nature when I'm conceptualizing a design. The Fantastic Car, in working in, in the early stages with Tim on it, I ended up looking at manta rays and stingrays, and that's hence the shape of the shallow section and a waist in midsection. One of the coolest part of the process is, is um, the initial process after the, after the concept is done and the design is bought off and Tim's happy with it. We go to TFX and go to Charlie Zarian, who's brilliant at working these things out and bringing them to reality. This is a layout project where we're at. These are, all, these are just the major tasks that we perform, and this gives our dates. Regular Gantt chart keeps flow, and then uh, different machines have different colors to keep track of what goes on the machine what day. And this is a general breakout of the vehicle, so everyone understands what we're building. We drop screen dumps um, out of the different CAD systems for everyone who's. We have several CAD drivers working different systems and CAM drivers. We run CAD software for design, we use Alias and a couple other programs. And then uh, for CAM, we use uh, different cutting pro packages for different processes. But we have to communicate with the guys on the floor, the guys who drive too, what's happening. So we drop these screen drums and break down the model to all the different pieces. Every piece is displayed here in some form so you can see it, like the, the uh, acrylic windshields, what they're made of where they go so everyone understands the model so when it's time to put the windshields in, they know where they are. This project laid out as a snap kit. Ultimately, all these big pieces are machined under control and when they come out of the molds, they snap right together. This is what I use for project management. I do configuration control for the vehicle here. As each feature is completed, I add it in. When the upper surfaces are completed, then I'll bring them in and then I'll export them out for everyone to use so that way it's consistent across the model that what I've explored is what we're going to build. I take all these pieces, bring them in. Uh, sometimes I have to patch a few pieces in, work on things. I keep, just keep track of what's happening with the model. When someone has a change they, they're looking at putting in the model, then they'll submit the change to me as a digital model. I'll bring it in, look at it, make sure it fits within the program, and then add it in. That same model that we produce digitally also goes into the movie as a digital artifact so that they can seamlessly blend the actual model that we produce and the digital model which is going to be moving moving around through the screen. So this is an A-scale model of the Fantastic Car. This is produced right after the buy-off on the digital model that we produced from the artist renderings. Um, this is used um, the, for the producer and the artist to buy off on the, the services, interior parts, everything else. Everything that's produced here is an exact copy scale model of what's going to be on the full-size vehicle. Um, you can even see the bottom of the vehicle has all the turbines, cutouts, um, venting, and everything else that's going to be on the full-size vehicle. So these are our engineering offices. We got a total of three people up here. Um, previously, when uh, the TFX made Batman, uh, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, they had tremendous crews, 50, 60, 70 people. Everything's handmade. It was very labor intensive. But uh, now with the, the digital technologies, we can have just a few people upstairs designing, moving stuff around, doing everything in the computer, and sending the data down to our machines to have uh, molds cut. And we know everything's going to fit together right the first time because everything was designed in the computer. I'm uh, actually currently working on the center console. We're going to be printing these parts out. This one has been a challenge just because of the sheer size of the project. Um, and there's so many different components. There's so many people working on it. There's so many uh, components uh, that are being changed on it because, you know, there's, it's a design, it, it's an artist's uh, conception of what the fantastic car should be. And that, uh, you know, based on the production, based on the actors, uh, sometimes can change. So uh, it, it has been a challenge, but, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have these two geniuses over here helping me out with it. Um, and everything's coming out okay so far. Currently designing the taillights. It's kind of one of the small add-ons for the vehicle. Um, just designing it based on manufacturability and aesthetics. Being able to get a design that's easy, quick to make. In turn, I'll take this and 
bring it into some uh, CAD software, which is uh, this software here that I'll use to put the uh, toolpaths on them. And that's what we export out to the machines so that they can produce the parts in various different mediums that we use for final parts. This is what the finished the foam looks like right when it comes off the mill. Um, we'll, it's got tiny little tool marks on there. Um, we'll come back and we'll sand it until it's smooth, um, seal it with an epoxy resin, and then um, lay parts directly on that. They're going to set the base coat down right now. With the important part, they're all prepping at the same time because a large tool like this on a warm day, they have to time it so that all the base coat kicks off at the same time. So they fix it all at the same time, and bang, it has to go out. And as soon as the two face coats are done, the next ship comes in in 25 minutes, then they take over and work about six hours to uh, laminate this piece. So when we come in in the morning, it'll all be done. And we'll just take this, work it out of here, bring the next set in, and it's a constant cycle every day. So when we go into production cycle, this is, uh, I'd say in the old days, this probably took us a few months to do, and we do it in a matter of two weeks, the whole thing. On board, it's got 17 working monitors that are going to play feedback for all the different functions that it does and all the systems checks. We're going to have to split up! What? This ought to be fun. <laughs> I'm driving it. Oh, guys are just, these guys are just recording my movements so that when we need to duplicate exactly what I did whilst I was driving it, um, you know, for the CGI special effects camera, and put it afterwards, they, they knew exactly what I did. <laughs> What's sending the, the signal? These are just electric, these are pretend shoulders, basically. But the electrical signal then goes off the computer, and the computer tells the rams where to be. So each one of those corresponds to one of those hydraulic rams in the rig. Right. And it's an exact miniature. Of, uh, but, and this is, this is actually doing something. Is it It's really electrical. It's electrical rather yeah, this than... is an electrical model of, of that. Right. So those pretend shoulders are telling, they, they know where they are. And so if you do that, those two rams will do exactly the same. So it, it, it didn't have to be like that. It's almost just that. Um, it's, it's, it's the, the easiest, easiest way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. That's amazing. And action. Left hand turn and turn. Well, I want one. Let's start with that. Because uh, this is like for a boy, you know, sign me up for that sucker. Because. Uh, it flies and it breaks up into pieces. You know, if there's there's three sections so that we can we can all sort of go our separate way. And, uh, I mean, it's just so many bells and whistles on that thing. It's incredible. <laughs> it's insane. It's not normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get in, Allison. Get in. Yeah. This is so cool, Mike. All right. Just another thing. All right, and we're out.